And let's go to Sochi now, where it was a big day for the medal boards. Seven events wrapped up today in the Olympics. Here's a look at where the medal count stands. The Netherlands and the U.S. are now tied with 20 medals each. Russia is next with 19 medals, followed closely by Norway, Canada, and Germany. For more from Sochi, RT's Richard Van Portfleet joined me earlier, and he filled us in on the day's big winners. Well, just concentrating on Team USA, things got off very well for them very early in the morning in Sochi as they claimed a bronze in the men's snowboard cross by going to Alex Diebold, while France taking the gold medal and the silver medal for the Russians also through Nikolai Lunin. And things ended very well for the USA as well, uh, late in the evening here in Sochi as they picked up a gold medal in the men's half-pipe ski. Well, obviously, the men's half-pipe is probably more famous in the United States for the snowboarding. Uh, Sean White, the flying tomato, uh, as he's known, uh, was a two-time Olympic champion coming into the Sochi Games, but unfortunately, early in the competition, couldn't make that a hat-trick as he crashed out and could only finish in fourth place. But uh, better fortunes for the Americans in the men's half-pipe ski as David Wise, well, he had an excellent first run, scoring 92 points, and that was a good enough to give him and America the gold medal. Uh, Wise faltered somewhat on his second run, scoring only three points, but that didn't matter as the USA uh, got gold and claimed their six gold medals so far at uh, the Sochi Olympics. Also, um, well, it could be gold medal number seven soon uh, for the USA uh, when the women's two men, sorry, two women uh, bobsleigh. Uh, the Americans uh, setting a track record uh, early on on their first run, and after two runs, they have a 10-second lead over their nearest rivals, Canada, and the second run's taking place on Wednesday. Well, that follows hot on the heels of... Uh, a two-man American uh, bobsleigh team uh, who won a silver medal uh, yesterday behind the Russians. So obviously, uh, American doing very well on the sliding track at the moment. So just to recap, after uh, Tuesday's events, America with six golds, uh, four silvers and ten bronzes, 20 medals overall, and perhaps on track to beat the record they set in... Uh, Vancouver four years ago, where they won 37 medals, including nine golds. Very impressive. Now, I understand there is a very big matchup coming up between the U.S. and Canada for women's hockey. Team USA was very disappointed in its showing the last time. Any ideas how they are changing their strategy this time around? Well, they're not really going to change their strategy much because, I mean, the Canada and the USA, they've played each other so many times over the last few years. Canada, of course, they're the reigning gold medalists after winning in Vancouver. But the USA, they got the bragging rights last time out in a major tournament, uh, winning the Women's World Championships in Ottawa, beating the USA 3-2 in the final. Well, the two teams have actually met so far in Sochi here. Uh, that was in the group stages where Canada just edged out uh, what was really a lackluster USA side by 3-2. to two. So the USA definitely with a point to prove there. But uh, they seem to be getting back to form uh, in a big way. They crushed Sweden 6-1 to one in the semifinals en route to the gold medal game. Uh, Sweden, really, it could have been in double digits, really, the score there. Such was the uh, attacking prowess of the USA. Uh, they had 10 different uh, scorers. Uh, who notched up points out of the 18 on their roster in that match. So certainly the USA looking very good uh, going into that gold medal game with Canada on the 21st. And let's talk about men's hockey. What are the chances of a U.S.-Russia matchup in the finals? Well, there are actually a fairly good chance. There's a very good chance of a Russia-USA matchup in the final because basically the two teams have been uh, on different parts of a draw. You have a Russia in the top part of a draw after only finishing fifth after the uh, preliminary stages, the USA uh, finishing second, so they're in the bottom half. Um, so they won't meet, if they do meet, until the final. Well, USA, they have a quarterfinal clash on uh, Wednesday where they will play uh, the Czech Republic, who uh, beat their near neighbors Slovakia 4-1 in the playoff round to get into the uh, last eight. And there have been dilemmas, really, for the USA coaching staff about who to play in net, really. Uh, they've gone for Jonathan Quick, 
uh, Los Angeles Kings netminder, which means they've actually benched the MVP from the Vancouver Olympics, uh, Ryan Miller, who was such an instrumental part of taking what was a very young USA side all the way and so close to beating Canada four years ago. But this UST team, they're a lot more mature. They've got a lot of players who've gained experience, such as Patrick Kane, two-time Stanley Cup winner with the Chicago Blackhawks. And they're looking very impressive. It's got the most goals so far uh, after the group stages, netting 15 and just conceding four. And in Phil Kessel, they've probably got one of the form players so far in the tournament. Uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs uh, forward had a great end to the uh, uh, season's break in the NHL with his scoring is continuing it here and he was the first American to actually score a hat-trick since 1980 when of course there was the uh, famous uh, miracle on ice uh, victory over the Soviet Union which uh, and America eventually went on to claim gold in Lake Placid. So some very big, very interesting matchups coming up for Team USA, both in men's and women's hockey. But aside from hockey, what are some of the other events that we should be keeping our eyes on? Well, uh, I'd like just to point out it's Oli, uh, Oli Aina Bjorndalen. Uh, he might not be a name that's too familiar with American viewers. He's a biathlete who competes for Nor uh, Norway. Um, he won a gold medal very early on in one of the first events in Sochi in the men's sprint, um, which was actually his 12th uh, Olympic medal, which drew him level with the um, legendary Norwegian uh, uh, cross-country skier uh, Bjorn Dale. And so Bjorn Dahlin just needs one more medal to go out on his own to become the most decorated Olympian in uh, Winter Olympics history. And he might have a chance on Wednesday in the mixed relay. But just coming back to hockey, it was a very interesting development today, actually. Um, but all the talk's really been about whether the NHL is going to be playing in Pyeongchang in 2018. And uh, unfortunately, there wasn't a great response from the NHL commissioner, Gary Bettman, who's who, decide, who couldn't guarantee that the NHLers would be there in Pyeongchang. I mean, I was chatting to Corey Perry, the Canadian forward and the Anaheim Ducks forward uh, this afternoon, and he was saying just how he's enjoying these, this tournament. And in general, that's been the whole, uh, everyone really um, who's participating in this hockey event has really enjoyed uh, taking part. And it's just about bringing hockey to new audiences as well. The ratings for the Sochi Olympics have been fantastic. Of course, everyone remembers the Russia versus USA game uh, in the pool stage, which was probably one of the best games I've seen in a long, long time. Very interesting. Definitely we will keep our eyes on Sochi as these uh, games continue to play out all the way to the closing. Richard Van Portfleet, thank you so much for joining us from Sochi, Russia with the latest.